This video is an introduction to VCA tracks in Pro Tools. Now, VCAs have been available in Pro Tools HD software for several years now, but with the release of Pro Tools 12.2, they were also made available in the native version of the software. So I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of uses for VCAs. In this session, which is a simple post-production session, we've got six atmosphere tracks, and I've already selected them. So got track one there. If I shift click the last one, we've selected all six. Now the first thing to do in order to put these under VCA control is to group them. Three ways of doing that. You can either click on the group menu and choose new group, or you can go to the track menu and choose group there, or you can see that there's a shortcut, which is command G. Okay. And then it brings up the create group menu. There's quite a lot to this, but for now, all we'll do is just go with the default settings and just give the group a name. Okay, now what this means is, if we have a look at this in the mix window, if I move any of the tracks which are assigned to that group, all of the constituent tracks of the group are moving and it maintains the relative balance between the various different faders. However, we can also create a VCA and have even more control. So if I create a new track and make sure it's a VCA and then we can give it a name by double clicking on it. I'm just going to call this Atmos once again. Um, it might be easy to have a look at this in the mix window actually. So you can see that this is just an empty fader and it's not doing anything. It has no effect at the moment on any other tracks and that's because it needs to be assigned to the same group as the tracks which I want to control. So these atmosphere tracks are assigned to a group and on the VCA track I need to click on this group selector and assign it to that same group and now what you can see is if I play the audio we can also affect the level with the you do get quite a lot of new people let's just stop that with the Atmos VCA and so what it's actually doing uh, is it will maintain the overall contour of the automation but it will trim it up or down by you know, however much you move the fader, and that can be very useful. So you might think, well, I can achieve exactly the same thing by just routing those tracks through an auxiliary. But the key difference here is you could route it through an auxiliary, and that will allow you to pull the absolute level down in terms of what you're hearing, but what it won't do is affect any of the tracks which are actually assigned to that group. This actually affects the track faders themselves, and it pulls them down essentially by what you could call a delta value. So it's trimming them. Um, by the amount that you've moved the fader. This also has a bearing on how it affects send levels. So let's just have a look. We've got a couple of dialogue tracks here. So this is a documentary about parkour and, and it's, they are you know, there's a lot of different interviews in it the and they're spread it's, across it's really, really nice mostly one dialogue track but there's a couple of things on another one. Wait. So let's just say I wanted to route these through an auxiliary and again let's have a look at it here. So what I'll do is route these to a new track which will be let's create a stereo auxiliary just in case I want to pan any of, of the dialogue uh, give it a name okay now the actual and audio is going through that and this is never, ever actually one major difference between it's, this and really, really VCAs nice. VCAs do not route any audio through the track they're purely controlling other tracks so whilst they show a level um, no actual audio is running through it I'll speak a little bit more about that in a minute, but let me just demonstrate something here. So and this dialogue, never, ever you know, you can see that I'm pulling the level down on the auxiliary and it's cutting what we can hear, but it's not actually affecting the fader level. This might be okay. It'll be fine for a lot of things, but here's a case where it could be a problem. Let's say, for example, on this dialogue track, I had um, some reverb. So I'll just create a stereo reverb track and uh, let's just put Phoenix Verb on it, really good reverb. And then I'll send some and level to it. Let's send quite a lot just to make it really obvious. Standing by the side. It's, okay. it's really, really nice because we've got such a pool of knowledge here. So we've got some people. reverb, but the problem is, let's say that that reverb level was balanced in the way we wanted it to be. If I pull the dialogue level down on the auxiliary, it's not going to actually affect the send level to the reverb. So what we'll end up with is the reverb staying put 
but the dialogue itself, the dry dialogue level, reducing in level, so it'll um, do this. They are never ever allowed to stand by It's really, really nice and we've got such a full knowledge of you could potentially use that as a deliberate effect, but it might not be ideal. And so what we could also do is, instead of going through an auxiliary, assign these to a VCA. So what I'll do is I'll group these two dialog tracks. So we now have two groups in the session. And you can always tell which tracks are assigned to groups because in the mix window it will be indicated just above the panner there. So now if I create a VCA, we can assign that to the dialog group. So just click here, choose the group, and here's the difference. If I just set this dialog auxiliary back to zero so it won't have any effect on this. Now if I pull down the dialog, you can see it is actually affecting the audio itself. And because it's doing that, that's having a knock-on effect on what's going to the send. So whilst the send itself doesn't go down, because these sends, in this case, are post fader, uh, it's it's affecting that. So just one more point about the level that you see on a, a VCA track. As I mentioned before, VCAs don't route any audio through the track itself, it's just a control ah, fader. In fact there's a ever, ever stray one there that we don't actually that. need. It's, it's really, okay. really nice. So such a... on this dialogue VCA, the level that you see isn't actually a summed total of the tracks controlled by it it's the highest level on any constituent track. So what that means is the level on the VCA will purely indicate the highest track going to it. And also, it makes a difference what the format of the tracks under control by the VCA are. So if I had stereo tracks, which are grouped, and I assign those to uh, the VCA, then you'll see that that track indicates stereo meters. Similarly, if I had a couple of 5.1 tracks and I assigned those to a VCA once they're grouped, then the VCA, when assigned to that group, will indicate uh, a six channel level. One other thing here is that if you have tracks assigned to a group which are mixed formats, so stereo, mono, 5.1, all assigned to the same group and under VCA control, in that case the VCA will actually show a single meter and once again it's only going to indicate the highest level currently under, v under control by that VCA. One more thing about these VCA groups, let's just take to have a look at this uh, atmosphere track. If we want to independently control any of these tracks which are assigned to the VCA, well you can essentially clutch them out of group control. So what I mean by that is you can see they're all controllable. If I want to move just this fader, at the moment, we can't do that. So you might think, well, I'll just ungroup it. And you could do that. Or, quicker way, hold down control, and that allows you to independently, whilst you're holding down control, move those faders, let go of control, and then you've got uh, group control again. Or you can do it with the VCA. However, if you don't want to be clutching stuff out of VCA control all the time, if you just want these to be independent tracks controlled by a VCA, so you want to be able to maintain the ability to move the faders on these without having to hold down that key all the time, well, there's a preference, standard VCA logic for group attributes. So you'll see that here. And when that's selected, so this is under the mixing preferences, when that's selected, we no longer have to hold down the control key in order to clutch them out of group control, we can control each fader independently while still maintaining overall control with the VCA. Now at the moment you saw that jump, that's because this already has automation on it. So that's an overview of VCAs in Pro Tools. In another video, we'll have a look at the implications of automating tracks and automating the VCA. See you next time.